All right, well, a new chapter in the Occupy Wall Street movement. Demonstrators have fanned out all across the United States today, protesting at major corporations. Their message is to get big corporations and all their millions of dollars out of politics. Now, more than 60 protests were planned across the country today, uh, including in New York, where my next guest is. Uh, there were some arrests there, and I'm now joined to speak about all this by Jesse LaGreca from Daily Coast. Uh, he participated in the protest earlier, I believe. I could be wrong about that, but Jesse, all right, let's talk about this. Uh, money and politics, corporations have always been the prime focus of the Occupy Wall Street movement. What's different about today? Well, today the focus is really on the fact that not only are corporations really just fleecing the entire American public, but that the system is just so broken that in a democracy of one man, one vote, if money equals speech, then people without money are totally voiceless. So the idea is really to focus on the fact that a country that only benefits the wealthiest one percent and corporate profiteers is a country that is no longer a democracy. And I'm very glad to see people getting out in the streets and doing something about it. You know, one of the uh, sort of targets, at least in some of the blog coverage, the media coverage of today's protest actions, uh, is this shady organization that's known by the acronym ALEC. Uh, I want to play you a, a quick soundbite uh, that sort of tries to explain what this is, and then we'll talk about it. The American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, is an extreme right-wing membership organization comprised of state legislators and powerful multinational corporations, including the Corrections Corporation of America. So who are these guys? And, 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 and talk more broadly about the symbolism of groups like this and their role in U.S. politics. Well, ALEC is a trade organization comprised of some of the largest companies in America. And what they basically act as is, in more or less words, a shadow government. They set up legislation to be distributed to corrupt lawmakers across country so that you see the same anti-worker, anti-consumer bills coming up in state after state. The basic fact is some of these corrupt politicians believe in outsourcing so much they outsource their own stupid ideas. And it's not a democracy. If it doesn't matter who I vote for, you're going to get the same special interest written legislation no matter who ends up in office, how can we possibly call this freedom? How can we call it democracy? So I think that really strikes at the heart of what Occupy Wall Street is talking about, as well as millions of other people in America, Russia, Syria, around the world. The idea that average working class people are voiceless in this system. And it's a total farce of democracy to pretend anything otherwise. Well, we're talking about democracy here, and I just want to you know, bring in sort of the security issue here, because we're seeing, it seems to me at least, increasingly lawmakers cracking down on Occupy Wall Street out of national security threats, right? And I thought in a democracy we're supposed to have freedom of speech. Uh, Congress on Monday approved a bill called uh, H.R. 347. It's the so-called trespass bill, which essentially would give the government the power to bring charges against Americans protesting anywhere in the country, it would make the federal. It would make it a federal offense to disrupt any event that's attended by a person with Secret Service protection, even if it's accidental. Now, this may be an isolated bill. Obviously, we don't know if Obama's going to sign something like this into law. But the question is, what does that say to you about where we're trending? It says that we're moving away from a free society. You know, when we really look at society in general. You can either have an open society or a closed society. And bills like this Trespass Act push us towards a closed society. You know, people often say that dissent is the highest form of patriotism. Now, how can we possibly say that we're free if we don't have the freedom to dissent? And especially considering the fact that our First Amendment is the heart of the idea of the American justice system. To say that you would have to ask permission from your government in order to protest that government is silly. But to say that we aren't allowed to be in certain places because uh, Secret Service is there is a total farce. The reality is this bill is an attack on our most basic freedoms, the right to assemble and to meet with other people in public spaces and talk about the issues that matter to us. And I guess my only real question is, this is obviously a travesty of justice, but where are those freedom-loving Tea Partiers who are so vocal in their dissent against this president? I wonder if they're aware that many of their own House of Representative elected Tea Party members just voted to take away their right to protest President Obama. I wonder how they'd feel about that. Now, Jesse, at the same time, this legislation was passed 388 to 3, overwhelming majority in, in the House. And I don't want to focus on this bill alone, but what that majority says to me is that most lawmakers do seem to, to sort of see the Occupy movement as some sort of a threat. You're, we're talking about, you know, protecting democracy. It seems that dissent is already deemed as a negative activity, something that we're already cracking down on. So how do you go forward from here if you guys have already been uh, identified and targeted as a threat? 
You know, I think back to American history and the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King Jr. was arrested repeatedly. I think anybody who stands up for their basic freedoms, who's willing to face incarceration, is standing alongside of Martin Luther King Jr. If anything, a 383 to 3 vote shows that the entire system's corrupt. And it's no surprise that they're attacking us. We're going after their gravy train. They want to stay corrupt and stay wholly owned subsidiaries of the special interest. The fact that we're bringing up this conversation about getting money out of, the, uh, out of politics, toning down corporate corporations, pervasive role in our elections. I'm not surprised that they're going after us. But I would be outraged if people weren't out in the street fighting against it. Because, you know, justice is on our side. So to me, these are the basic freedoms we're fighting for. How can we possibly reform this country if we can't even maintain the same civil liberties that our founding fathers fought for? To me, this is about our future. And I keep saying it. What the politicians are doing is the total repeal of the 20th century. It's time to fight back now or never. And Jesse, you're, you're talking about getting money out of politics. Realistically, of course, this isn't something that's going to happen overnight. What is a realistic victory uh, for the Occupy Wall Street in your view, let's just say in the next year? What would you consider a victory? Well, I think every little thing is a big victory in a certain sense. Just opening hearts and minds, to use that term, and getting people aware of just how broken the system is, is in and of itself a small victory. I don't think this is the kind of thing we fix in one year. I think this takes a movement. And, you know, like I keep saying, there is no one law that we could pass to fix all of our problems. I think starting with a repeal of Citizens United, ending corporate personhood, and federally funded elections would be a great place to start. But we really need to lay the foundation for that to happen. So in the course of this year, I think the feedback Meeting Alex-sponsored, corporate-owned politicians in elections is major importance. But I think it's also very important just to be in the street and voicing our dissent, because if we don't, they're going to take that right away, too. Well, that certainly does not look like it's coming to an end anytime soon. Thank you so much. We're going to keep tracking the story for you guys. That was activist and writer for The Daily Coast, Jesse LaGreca, with us from New York.